So we're over here on Tier Maker. And what we're going to do is rank, in my opinion, the best and worst Batman solo films. So these are the ones from the Batman franchise. So this will not include Batman vs. Superman, Justice League, and all that. It will be strictly Batman films. So we have S... A, B, C, D, and haven't seen slash unsure. I don't believe I'll have anything in here. So we have Batman from 89, Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson. We got Batman Returns, Keaton again, Michelle Pfeiffer, Danny DeVito, Penguin. Then we have Batman Forever, where the franchise starts to change. So we got... Val Kilmer, I believe. Jim Carrey. We got Tommy Lee Jones and Uma Therma. No, that's not Uma Therma. Never mind. Then we have Batman and Robin with Uma Thurman. Chris O'Donnell and Alicia Silverstone. Oh, and Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze. We got Batman Begins, The Dark Knight. We have The Dark Knight Rises, and we have The Batman. So once I put these in place, they're not set in stone, so we can always move them around. I'm going to judge these films as a whole. So certain ones, I don't like the Batman actor. Or certain ones, I don't like the villain actors. Or how the villains portrayed or whatever. So first, we're going to start with Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson. We're going to put this one in B. Just to start, Michael Keaton was the Batman for so long. It was the first serious Batman movie after the Adam West, you know, pow, zam, boom, very campy show. So he changed a lot of that. Tim Burton directed it. A very, very good movie. Jack Nicholson as a serious Slash not serious Joker. Absolutely awesome. Then we have Batman Returns. So we're going to put that one. In the A category. So that one there. Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh my god. Amazing Catwoman. Hot as hell. You have Danny DeVito. As the Penguin. Perfect casting right there. They changed the lore on Penguin, which wasn't really for the best. We even had Christopher Walken in there. So it was a good film. Great follow-up to the original Batman. So it took what Batman did, but then just made it even better. However, it took a lot of the seriousness out of it, which you'll see why... Some of the other ones are not going to be as highly rated. Then we have Batman Forever. So this one is going to go in the C category. With that one, this is where everything started to change. Not for the good. We had, I believe Val Kilmer now is Batman. We had Jim Carrey. With the over-the-top Riddler character. Which, funny enough, was supposed to be originally Robin Williams. However, there was beef between Robin Williams and Tommy Lee Jones. Which, ironically, when Jim Carrey got hired, caused beef between Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones. Then we have Robin O. Oh, Robin. We have Robin introduced as Chris O'Donnell. We had... Weird thing where they're starting to do comic stuff, but not do comic stuff. And you started seeing like the cheesiness. The studio start getting involved. But that, my friends, was nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Compared to Batman or Robin. It had Arnold Schwarzenegger, who never said any serious lines. Every single line was a joke, a pun. Remember, 
What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! We had Uma Therma as Poison Ivy. We had Bane in there as a bodyguard. Absolute buffoon in the role. Totally missed the whole concept of Bane. Chris O'Donnell was back. But now we had George Clooney as Batman. And to me, George Clooney was a better Bruce Wayne than a Batman. And they had Alicia Silverstone as Batgirl. And they also had Batgirl as the niece of Alfred instead of the daughter of Jim Gordon. Which is a very interesting take. But the worst thing of all, they had the bat nipples. They introduced nipples onto the bat costume. And this was entirely 100% cheesy, cheesy, cheesy Batman movie. They also had lines like Batman would say, This is why Superman works alone, despite not having a Superman in their universe. And he would also pull out the Bat MasterCard, I believe, or Bat Visa, whatever it was, the Bat Credit Card. And it was just absolutely horribly all over the place. That, to me, was the worst Batman film so far of all time. Then we get into the Nolan trilogy. Where they said, okay, that cheesiness, the campiness, we can't do that anymore. We're going way too back to the Adam West stuff. We need to go back to Tim Burton-esque. So they got Nolan. And the first one was... Batman Begins. And we're going to put that in the A category. Because this started it all again. Where you had the gritty, down-to-earth, realistic Bruce Wayne having mental capacity PTS. He was out training. They showed Raj Al Ghul. It was great. It wasn't over the top. They took it serious. And Christian Bale was Batman. However, I do have one problem with Christian Bale and it's that voice. Up to this point, everyone was using their normal voice. And then you had Christian Bale, I'm Batman. Where's the bombs? Give me back my son. (coughs) Oh God, I can't even do that for long. Okay, he didn't say the last line, but he might as well have. I love that movie. However, there was one movie that was way above it. And that was The Dark Knight, which is going to go in the top spot in S. Now with this, it was almost a perfect movie. So you had Heath Ledger as the Joker, a serious take on it after all the joke comparisons with Jack Nicholson, Cesar Romero, all the other ones. It was fresh. And he committed to the role. And it was beautiful. Him and Christian Bale bounced off each other beautifully. You had dark and gritty. You still had the Batman voice. But it was so, so close to a perfect video. Or a perfect movie. But then it got ruined. The trilogy got ruined for multiple different reasons. And we got The Dark Knight Rises, which I'm going to put in the C category. So with this one here, there's multiple factors in this. One, the death of Heath uh, Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger was supposed to be in this film. And this film, The Dark Knight Rises, was supposed to be split into two different video or films. But the studio forced them to push it together into one film. So from my understanding, the first one was supposed to be Batman getting his back uh, back broken by Bane, them taking over Gotham, and the third movie was supposed to be him healing himself, coming back, overtaking them, and then winning the city back, and then retiring. However, again, with things changing, it was a rush job, 
everything was rushed and it felt really, really bad. It felt out of place for the trilogy. And then we get to the Batman. Now the question is, where do I rank this? Do I rank it with the Dark Knight? No. Do I rank it with the original Batman from 89? Do I rank it above Batman and Robin, Batman Forever? Yes. Yes, I do. So this is on par with the Tim Burton Batman. And a lot of good things that it changed. A lot of things I don't agree with. I like that they upgraded it to the 90s instead of like the 60s and 70s. I do like that he's more gritty. It's Batman before he learned how to do things. So he was making mistakes. He was dark and gritty. He's beating people up. He doesn't have that that code of ethics, if you will, right now. He's very short-tempered. I like that. However, I did not like the new Batmobile. I did not like um, Robert Pattinson playing Batman. He seems too small for the role. He does a great job voicing Batman, acting like Batman, but he looks so much smaller. And however, I have to say this, I hate, hate, hate how the Riddler looks. Now, you don't have to do over-the-top Jim Carrey Riddler, but you can do a serious Riddler that looks more comic accurate. Think of the Riddler from the Arkham games. And that's where I rank it. Now, let's see. Do I want to change any of them? Uh... Uh, see, okay, so bottom of the barrel is Batman and Robin. Is Batman Forever better than that? Yes. Is that better than that? Yes. I'm going to put this here because I think that's slightly ahead of that one. Uh, these two, those are good. Those are good. Yeah, I think that's good. That is my ranking for the Batman movies. I'm sure other people have different opinions. Leave that in the comments if you believe differently.